Hey, it's Corbett Harrison coming to you live, yet somehow recorded from the home office here at the Harrison household. Welcome. Here at the Harrison house, we do live writers' lives. We have notebooks all over the place full of our ideas. When we have a fresh thought or a unique idea, we make sure we write them down. Uh, one of the notebooks that we keep is our interactive notebook, and we call it basically our stuff we learn when we experience um, a fact or some piece of nonfiction that inspires us. Um, this is our place where we capture those ideas. When I learned about Teddy Roosevelt and his leadership style, I decided I wanted to remember that, and I built this page about it. When I learned about how oxygen enters all different creatures' types of bodies, I created this interactive page about it. Uh, that's what our interactive notebooks are. They're places for us to react to nonfiction. And today, I'm going to be sharing with you an interactive notebook challenge I give my own students, and my hope in sharing with it it with you is that you might be are inspired to try it with your students so that they can learn and celebrate their own learning in a way that's personalized to them. Um, this is a simple process. It's in three steps up here at the top. Let me show it to you in four steps for some reason here. First though, first of all, what you do when you create an interactive notebook page in the way that I am challenging you today is you read and you process new content. This can be a class assignment. Uh, everybody reads the same content. A class assignment where everybody reads different content. It can be the student is just interested in a piece of information, but new content must enter the student's head so that they are ready to save those notes and do something interesting with them. Next, students find a meaningful quote about the topic that they've researched. Next, students analyze that quote for other words and phrases that stand out to them, and then they use those words and phrases to build a theme, a personal theme to help them recount the facts and their personal reactions on the interactive notebook page that they have created. Now here's what I know you need an example, a visual example, because I would need a visual example. So let me take you through the process of how this works several times. First of all, let's say you have eaten the best dill pickle you've ever eaten in your life, and you've decided, I need to know how they make dill pickles, all right? I'm an adult. I get to choose things that I want to learn about. Um, students have to have things assigned to them. You're going to notice my topics. I always choose things that I'm interested in. So. Dill pickles. Uh, let's see, I'll bet they involve cucumbers, dill, I guess, um, and probably some vinegar because they last for forever, but I don't know much else about them. And so let's say I research and I learn the history or I learn the science of pickling or I learn just some interesting facts about where uh, different types of pickles. I am then ready to celebrate those facts on a page in my interactive notebook. And so step two, I have to think about quote possibilities. Now I went to Brainy Quotes. There's lots of places to get quotes. I went to Brainy Quotes thinking I wouldn't get very much from pickle, but I was surprised. I found this nice insult by Alice Rose about Longworth. He looked as though he's been weaned on a dill pickle. I like that one. Nice insult. I also found one from our founding fathers. Uh, hunger is the best, the best pickle. Kind of a different meaning of pickle there, but still could be useful to me. Um, Arlo Guthrie had a great song. He didn't want a pickle. He just wanted to rye my motorcycle. And uh, that's a great song to look up. It'll make you laugh. Uh, and then uh, I also found an Ambrose Pierce. Great quote, life is a spiritual pickle preserving the life from decay. Uh, a very interesting quote. So I have four to choose from. And then the idea is you have to choose one. You have to say, all right, let's choose this quote. You write it at the top of the two pages that you're saving for your interactive notebook page on, in this case, still pickles. If that's the quote you want, you do that. If that's the quote you want, you do that visual examples. If that's the quote, that's what you do. You get it at the top of your page somehow, and then you move to the two next steps. First of all, you look for different words or phrases in that quote that would inspire you to say, I should make the page do this, which means you're creating a theme for that page or an idea that link, that'll help you link your ideas together as you record your notes and your personal reactions. And so let's say you took the Alice Roosevelt Longworth example and you liked the idea of what someone would look like who was weaned on a dill pickle. I picture someone who's very puckered up. And so uh, go to the internet, find pictures of people with puckered up faces. Here are three that I found. And then you say, all right, that's going to be part of my page theme. I'm going to have each of them tell me one interesting fact about the pickle. And then look, I have all that white space in between those dialogue bubbles where I can record facts or personal reactions. I have just 
taught you about dill pickles on a page that was inspired by this quote by Alice Roosevelt Longworth. Just one idea. Here's hunger is the best pickle. Let's say that makes you think of the Hunger Games. And in the Hunger Games, you think of the cornucopia. And then you think, okay, that's crazy. What if there, and you're allowed to do this with the, these interactive notebooks, have crazy thoughts. What if there was a cornucopia and it was filled with pickles? Right. And then, let's say you created this imaginary character who is the District 12 Pickle Tribute, and this tribute's going to tell you how, in the form of a survival guide, how to create dill pickles or how to escape the world of dill pickles or whatever, but a very personal reaction inspired by one word that made you think of something else and you build that personal connection. That's what I mean by a personal connection. That's kind of a crazy idea. Don't know if I'll do that one. Maybe I'll do the ride my motorcycle and let's say you found out there were three steps to make dill pickles. Well, you could record them and then interlace them together with a motorcycle and you're celebrating a quote and a song by Arlo Guthrie and you're explaining yourself and you have a way to share your facts in a way that maybe no one else thought to do it that way. And then finally, preserving the life. I think of a life preserver and I could put those down and then somehow figure out that that four ideas, four visuals to show you the, the brain thinking, the metacognition that you'll have to go through as you do this. These are the four steps, the four steps. We've just gone through them visually. Let me take a moment to show you the page I created for my own interactive notebook. Now, I had a driving question this summer because um, I did mess around with my garden a little bit. I fixed drip systems and I changed soils and fertilizers. I had bean plants this summer, but I had no beans. And that's the first time that's ever happened. And so I had that driving question in my mind. I decided to research so that next year I do not have this problem. Um, plenty of online articles. Type that into Google. Uh, I read six probably and I compared what they were saying and tried to find facts that I thought that's probably applicable to my own uh, situation and I was ready to create a page. Theories why I think I had bean plants but no beans this summer and next step I went and I found a quote. Here's the quote I found that I really liked. A nice E.B. White quote. Uh, E.B. White wrote Charlotte Webb if you've forgotten that but a writer is like a bean plant. He has his little day and then get stringy, and that's true if you leave beans on the vine too long, they get a little stringy. Um, but uh, I liked that word stringy, and immediately it made me think of a string quartet I had once seen called the String Beans. And I wondered how many string quartets have that name, and I wonder how many of them actually think that's an original name. But uh, I was going, my brain went immediately for a string quartet, and uh, here's the layout I decided to start creating. Um, I had to look up what a string quartet was just to verify I was right. Um, it's two violins, a viola, and a cello, and each player can play another instrument, so it's not always just those four, but that's what a, 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 a string quartet is. I learned that additional fact while I was building this. Um, I just I like the idea of the string quartet because they have a first fiddle and a second fiddle and then viola and cello and I thought that might be the order of my theories. Um, you can actually see on my page here. Oh, uh, what, um, here's uh, I, what I decided for my first fiddle was uh, the biggest reason that I uh, perhaps did not get beans and I, I blame I decided to blame my soil type I had changed my soil enough that I thought that could be the problem but ultimately my rough draft became this this is my final copy of my interactive notebook page you can see right up here at the top there is my quote I taped it down real well so it's there um, and I called my page string bean quartet you'll see each of the four instruments and each of my four places to record my facts um, I call them interactive notebook pages because certainly from my advanced students, I require them to not only have a page set up, but also to have something in their page that's interactive. Something that if you shared it with a partner or in a small group, um, you would have something for them, something for them to watch for or to listen for as they're going over the information. On this one, I decided to build the, a couple of riddles. Um, and my riddle is, why did I stop watching the Lawrence Welk show on television? I know a great um, pun that uses the word violins, and I thought this was a good place to use it, and that's the answer to my pun. And if you want the answer, you'll have to look at the page. In the notes, you'll notice that some of my later la letters have been highlighted, and that H there with the number six on it, that means in the number six spot, the H is going to go there. And if you find them all, you'll eventually spell out the answer. And here is the answer. There's too much violins on TV already, which is why I don't watch Lawrence Welk. If you don't get that joke, have a 
old person explain it to you. Um, I'm going to move on and show you with my other riddle. On the right hand side you'll see there's a riddle too. And this is probably the more important riddle. What's my personal conclusion for having no beans this summer? There's my answer. If you solve my riddle you'll figure out that I think my biggest thing I did this summer was over watering all the information I learned. Um, if it pools up that's bad for beans and that was happening with my soil this summer. And so there you have it. Idea to draft to final page. As you'll see here, I now have a page in my interactive notebook that celebrates something in a way that I wanted to learn to it and my, what, to learn it and my personal reactions to them. Uh, in 2008, uh, January, we're going to start launching um, a series of uh, interactive notebook challenges like this one on our website, the Always Right website, which is CorbettHarrison.com. I certainly invite you to come see it anytime, but uh, I hope you found this particular notebook challenge useful. Show, share it with your students or share um, it with yourself as you're creating your own interactive notebook. Just remember, if you're living a writer's kind of life, um, you're living a pretty good life. Surround yourself with notebooks. Record those ideas that are unique, unique and yours. And uh, life's better. Life's better. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. Mm -hmm.